the head coach of the New England Patriots, Gerard Mayo, and some comments that he made not even an hour ago. Uh, he had his 115 press conference. He uh, addressed the media. He was immediately peppered with questions about who the starting quarterback is going to be. And there's smoke coming up from the chimney, like when they choose the Pope. Decision has been made. A decision has been made. The verdict is in. But you're going to have to tune in tomorrow, same time, same place, to get the answer. That's, that's what he's saying. He says, I know who the quarterback is going to be. I've made a decision. It was my decision, not a big collaborative effort like he uh, insinuated earlier. And we will find out at some point tomorrow morning. Now, he didn't say exactly when. Uh, do you know what their schedule is tomorrow? No, but I'm guessing they have an 8 o'clock squad meeting, okay. something like that. So he will tell. Sounded like he wanted to tell the quarterbacks individually and then the squad as a whole. And you don't then, think they know yet? Well, I mean, Jacoby told us yesterday that he expects to be the starter and right. he expects to be in Cincinnati. He did. Um, I don't know with Gerard. I, I think what you pointed to, though, first of all, I think we need to spin this around a little bit and look at it differently. We keep telling him, say less, don't. But really, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Like, you could go five straight Bill Belichick press conferences and get nothing to react to, nothing right. of note, only consistency, same day, same quote. I'm not telling you when I'm going to decide. You'll find out when I feel like telling. He's not going to. Gerard is the opposite. Yeah, right. You got to tune in because you never know what he's going to say. And he never know when he's going to change 100% what he used to say. Whether it was Judon, like, yeah, we want players to talk and we want them to be open and then. A week later, philosophically, we think guys should keep things in-house and not talk to the media and do things publicly. And now we had a collaborative effort where everybody was going to pick the quarterback, it sounded like. Alex Van Pelt, who has been dubbed the HC of the offense. Mm -hmm. And then you have Elliot Wolf, you got Ben McAdoo, you got TC, uh, whatever the hell his last name is, disrespectfully on the radio <laughs> saying, I forgot your name. Anyway, the quarterback's coach. All of those guys. Now he's like, no, it's on me. And I don't even need to explain myself. That's what I found He's got a little, he's become emboldened. It's my decision. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't think I need to explain it to the team because if it goes wrong, blame me. You were referring to the great T.C. McCartney. T.C. McCartney. You were, you were talking about I was going to say Cunningham, but I knew it wasn't right. It so was I, not. That was not right. So good instincts there. Um, yes, he's owning this. He's owning this decision. It's all on him. It's almost like he heard all these people talking about how, hey, it doesn't seem like Gerard Mayo even wants to make this decision. Right. It doesn't seem like he wants to have anything to do with it. I'm glad he said that. I'm very glad to hear him say that. It's assertive. It's what a head coach should say. And I think it's a very big reversal, 180 basically, from what he said the last time about the big collaborative effort and how all the offensive guys are going to have something to say about it. I still don't 100% believe that it's just his call. No chance. There's obviously people over no his chance. head who I'm sure are influencing this call in uh, some way or another or who have greenlit him to make it, if that makes sense. Like, right. They're saying, all right, Gerard, you can pick the week one starter, but if you... If it gets crazy, we're going to intervene. Like, that type of thing. Like, they're allowing him to do that. And if they need to or want to, then they can uh, step in at some point later on. Is anyway. it safe to say there's no chance, whoever's involved, that it's an easy decision, it was unanimous? There has to have been internal debate. W however big the room is, however big the table is, mm -hmm. the boardroom, there had to have been debate. We all can't be so different from them, right? It can't be possible that everybody publicly is debating it and internally... Gerard Mayo, Alex Van Pelt, T.C. McCartney, Ben McAdoo, Jonathan Kraft, right. Robert. They can't possibly all be on this. There had to have been some sort of discussion, debate, and like, I appreciate your opinion, but this is what we're doing kind of situation. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's a good point. And I think that when you, when you add up the sum of this entire uh, thing, you know, going back to when they drafted Drake Mayo, when they first signed Jacoby Brissett, there was an idea of what this was all going to look like. The I plan. Mean, I the day that plan, I do think, was hatched right away. I think yeah. they sort of said, all right, we're bringing in a guy who's a premier backup in the NFL. Would you say about Jacoby Brissett? I'd say he's a premier backup. Feels like a stretch. I don't think so. I think he's one of the better backups in the league. Or he's considered, coming into this year, he's considered one of the better backups in the league. I'd give him a solid meh. Okay. In terms of backups or in terms of, like, all quarterbacks? Uh, backups. In terms of backups. Right. Now, backups are a, it's a strange group because... Good backups aren't really backups in the NFL. They end right. up being starters. So I don't think he's a starting quarterback, so maybe you're right. Maybe he is kind of at the top of the you're a true backup. That's what I No mean. one wants you to play, but you're capable of playing when you do play. And if you have to. So Bailey Zappi's in that conversation too, right? Well, he's on the practice squad, so we'll get to him in just a minute. But yeah, I'd say he's probably, he's in that conversation. I don't, I wouldn't put him ahead of Brissett, but I think that when you talk about guys who you don't want to see start necessarily, but you're not freaking out if they come into a game. Right. 
Brissett's right up to him. Okay. Minshew, you know, maybe. Uh, uh, Minshew wants, Minshew's more of starter. Still thinks he's a starter, that Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is actually, term. he is the starter, right? In, in, in Vegas, didn't in he Vegas. get names? Yeah, yeah, so, right. But last year, you know, when uh, he had to come in for Richardson, like that was a good situation for the Colts, and I think that would be the same sort of good situation here in New England. I thought that would be a good use for him. When they first signed him, I thought, okay, great. If they're drafting a quarterback, then this is the guy that I want in there. I think that makes way more sense than what they had last year with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, two guys who were basically the same age, mm. competing with each other. Neither one had any more experience than the other. And it just seemed like, uh, you know, with Hoyer, when Hoyer was out, it seemed like there was really nothing in there. It was just kind of a, a, a chaotic quarterback room where both guys weren't very good. Like, that's, that's what you had there. Hopefully you don't have that here, but at the very least, you can look at it and say, okay, whatever Drake May is or ends up being, there's a guy there in the room with him who's a veteran, who's experienced, and if he has to come into a game, you're not, uh, you know, you're not running for the hills. Like, that's, there's value in that. And a guy that I still haven't really heard a bad word about. He's going, we talked to him yesterday about it, the awkward nature of this, and right. he's been through these before, and he's seen rooms, and you don't get any hints of, oh, Brissett's angling behind the scenes, or he's a backstabber, or he said he would, he said he'd be comfortable with his role, but he's not comfortable with his role. I've, I've never heard a bad word about Jacoby Brissett, and I think that is a benefit to Drake May, and really the Patriots as a whole, because this thing has gotten, it feels like it went sideways somewhere. I don't know how you could, this plan... Did they write the plan down? Was everybody aware of the plan? Did they not express it internally well enough? Because to have such a distinct supposed plan mm -hmm. and for it to be seemingly so helter-skelter, mismanaged publicly uh, is tough to kind of come to terms with, come yeah, to grips with. Absolutely. Uh, Mayo went on to speak more about this. He talked about how it was his decision and his decision alone. Yeah. Look, they've, they've gone through the process as well. They've gone through the spring with these players. They've gone through training camp with these players. I'm sure they all have an opinion on who they think should be the starting quarterback, but I don't think I have to explain it to anyone else. It's my decision, and look, if it doesn't work, blame me. Blame me. Coach, what can you tell us? Sorry. I would say one thing. Um, I think it's important to remember like, what's good for the team today may not be good for the team weeks down the, weeks down the line. And so I, I think the – you know, the challenge is you want to win every single game now, but also we're trying to build something special here in New England. So that, that to me was, you know, that was a challenge. Translation, Jacoby Brissett is your starter. He could not have said it any clearer because that sentence doesn't that sentence make any couldn't sense. couldn't apply to Drake. The other way. Right, right. Yeah, it couldn't apply to him. So he absolutely just told you without telling you because he hasn't told the team, although the team probably already knows as well because just like those who voted in our poll, that was 78% expect J Jacoby Brissett to start. My guess in that locker room is it'd be 100%. They've been behind the scenes. They know what's going on. They know who QB1 is. But that sentence right there, which he didn't have to say, I believe it was Phil Perry was ready to ask the next question. Like, Shut up, Phil. I got more. I got more. I'm going to say something here. I know I should probably stop talking, and Stacey James has told me to talk less. Shut that I'm handsome saying it. face up right now. <laughs> I got more to say. And I'll talk to you when we're on quick slants again together in two years. That's right. Um, yeah, and... Uh, all in all, I mean, the demeanor. I thought the demeanor, the the cadence, everything about it just seemed more assertive. It seemed more like, you know, he's been hearing the whispers around yeah. uh, the media or maybe around the building, and he wants to he wants his name on this. He wants this to be the first thing that people look at and say, all right, Gerard Mayo became the real head coach today. You know? Now, does he really? Because remember the last time we heard this? Do you remember the last time we heard this? And it was a decision that was definitely made by the HC. Bill Belichick said when he hired Matt Patricia – and if Joe it doesn't Judge, work, blame it on me. I do remember that, yes. And we know that was his decision. Right. That wasn't a collaborative. That wasn't anyone else. That was him making that decision. And then it seemed like he didn't really want to take the smoke later. I'm not sure I ever heard him say, yeah, I really porked that up. That really right. cost me my career and really screwed up Mac Jones. So it is interesting, this tactic from a usually not so assertive. But maybe, you're right, maybe he's heard the whispers and needs – because. You know, if they're going to ask Drake May to be more assertive in his competition with Jacoby Brissett, mm -hmm. which is what they did, they wanted him to be more assertive, not be deferential to the veteran. Doesn't the head coach need to follow his own advice and be more assertive and not defer everything to Alex Van Pelt and Elliot Wolf and everybody else? You're the head coach. You're the one who is the face and voice, if not necessarily the actual decisions. You have to at least appear like you're the leader if you're not fully unilaterally the leader, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, no one has any idea what's going on. You're going to end up with 
backstairs and we're going to get stories of confusion, didn't know who to talk to about playing time. We're going to get all of that if he doesn't at least – put on the front that he is the uh, true leader of this team. Yeah, and we already have a coach in town who defers everything to goalie Bob. That would be Jim Montgomery. Yeah, that and, didn't uh, go well. We don't need two of those. Nope, uh, yeah. that didn't go well.